Hi, Mark Diaz here for TunyAnimation101.com. In this lesson, I'm gonna put everything we have learned so far from previous lessons to create an animation that looks organic. And by organic, I mean animation that doesn't look fake, weird, robot-like. So everything we have covered so far can be summarized in eight steps. Visualization, that is using a storyboard. Production, which is redrawing each panel of the storyboard in the final quality. Sound production, that is you tell the story using audio as if it was to be played in a podcast. The animatic, putting together sound, music, voices, etc. Number five, rigging. That is when you prepare your character, either you divide it in parts, you put it together, and you do that for each panel of your storyboard. And then six, the animation. This is when you create an animation for each panel. But for that part, remember, you record yourself to get references, to get perfect timing. And then seven, you render each file separately. And then number eight, editing. You put together all the scenes in an editing software. Each one of those is very, very important. Some take very little time and some take a lot of time. In a previous lesson, I shared with you the project report of the hunters. So you can check it out. If you haven't, you can just go to 2d101.com forward slash hunters report. In that report, the visualization, the storyboard, took 25 minutes. The production took 30 hours. Sound production took 3 hours, 16 minutes. The animatic took 5 minutes. The rigging took 23 hours, almost 40, uh, I mean, almost 24 hours. The animation, 9 hours, 12 minutes. And the render, render and editing took 15 minutes and 41 no i mean yeah 15 minutes in percentage let me show you how this is distributed show the screen this is how it looks in percentage okay so you can see that the heaviest workload is producing the images that's 44 percent and preparing for animation that is 35%. All of that uh, includes the little animation for the controllers you're going to be doing. That is the, the most work. And then in third place is the animation, 13%. That is the third biggest is 13%. So let's get it started and cover each one, okay? So the first one is the visualization. It takes less than 1% of your energy and time, but it tells you how you're gonna use the remaining 99% of your time and energy. Really, it's that important. Storyboarding is a whole topic on its own. Uh, a crappy storyboard delivers a crappy animation. And, uh, and of course, by crappy, I'm not talking about the quality of your drawings. No, your drawings can be uh, crappy sketches. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the quality of the visual storytelling. What you need to do in the storyboard is just to visualize the scene. Your drawings can be really, really crappy, seriously. The point is to tell your story with pictures. That is what you ultimately want to do anyway, right? The images I did for the original storyboard of the hunters are super crappy, but this, they served me to visualize what I needed to see in my animation. Now, if you're thinking, ah, oh, the storyboard, can't I just skip it? Okay, if you're thinking that, then don't do animation. The storyboard is everything. It's only 1% of your time and energy, but it determines the next 99% you're gonna put in, okay? Without a storyboard, you won't have a good animation. Remember, with a storyboard, you can get the perfect number of drawings you need to have the best 
emotional expressions from your characters. Remember, that is the key. Emotional expressions. And you do that without drawing more than needed or less than needed. You just get the perfect amount of work you need to have it at its best version possible. Remember, your storyboard has three objectives. Do you remember them? The, what do you need to create a smooth animation? Here they are. Again, okay? To get the correct body language, the correct facial expressions, and the correct mood of the scene. Okay, so that's the storyboard. Next, production. The production is when you take each of the panels of your storyboard and you start producing the final high quality images that will be used in the animation. The high quality backgrounds, high quality characters, and most importantly, the final look of the body language, the facial expressions, and the mood of the scene. This stage is one of the biggest in terms of time and energy. Remember, production for the hunters took 44%. If you have no drawing skills, this stage is going to be a nightmare. Uh, to save you the trouble, again, you can get a quote from us uh, to have us do this for you and you only do uh, everything else. So you can do step one, then we handle step two, the production, and then you keep doing everything else. So this will save you a lot of energy. Time and production, our production service will be much cheaper because uh, we're going to be only handling one part of your production, right? In any case, if you're enjoying drawing, uh, this is going to be a paradise for you. As I often recommend, this is something you can be doing while you're drawing. You can be listening to music, having your favorite movie playing in the background, or you can be listening to a podcast, or my favorite, listening to an audiobook. Then we have sound production. This one is very, very important. A beautiful animation with crappy audio looks ugly. The way I try to explain it to other students is to imagine that you're telling your story on a podcast. No images. Imagine you have to use no images and only audio. What would you need to have the, for the listener to imagine everything you need for your story? So that is what you basically need to do. Tell your story using only sound, music, and dialogue. If you put uh, th that audio on a podcast and people can't really understand what's happening, then your audio sucks. It needs to get you in the mood of the scene. That, that is the power of audio. Along with the animation and cinematography, it helps you get the people into the mood of the scene. Now, the animatic. The animatic, that is very, very fast. You do that very, very quickly. After you have the production and all the audio, the animatic is very simply to put up. You just have the... Actually, the animatic is the final visualization of your animation that is like the last part just be the last part of your preparation just before you start all the the animation it is when you take all the high quality images you produce each panel and you put them together with the audio and you're basically create a timed slideshow for your storyboard this helps you see if your animation is working or not, if it's funny or not. For the hunters, our goal was to make people laugh. Hey, it's a joke. So the delivery, the pauses, the character looking and thinking, all had to be perfect to have people laugh at the end, at the punchline. First, I showed the animatic to friends and family, and then I posted it on Facebook and YouTube. And we got good reactions. That was a green light. And also I got interesting feedback. I wanted to use very simple characters with no hands, just like like a, a little ending. Uh, but people kept asking, what's up with the hand? Are you going to add hands? So at the end I added hands for the final animation, except <laughs> for a little mistake I did that I didn't notice, I produced the hand, but a friend told me, hey, the image you put there doesn't have a hand, and oh, 
busted. So that is the animatic. The purpose is to visualize the final version of your animation and also do any final adjustments you need uh, before you invest a lot of time and energy into the actual animation. Great. Now, rigging and preparing the characters. This is the other stage that takes a very long time. For us, well, for me, it took 35% of all the project. Again, I did this listening to audiobooks. For me, that makes, me, makes it very enjoyable. For you, it might be music, a movie, or a podcast. Uh, rigging and preparation requires you to separate a character in parts. The, you need to separate the arms, the torso, the legs, etc. And for the face, it gets even more complicated. You need face, hair, eyebrows, eyes, nose, mouth, ears, and all this complexity for what? Well, for a smooth animation that is super easy and fun to play with. In frame by frame, you have to draw all those little details anyway, but you have to do them thousands of times and with a rigged character you only draw them once cool right so this is the preparation after you prepare them you bring them to cartoon animator 4 and in there you make sure the rigging works and also you prepare the face for 360 rotation we have a full course that teaches you how to animate facial expressions smoothly in cartoon animator 4 you can check it out here 2d101.com forward slash animation okay now the next one the animation this one this one is my favorite uh, the one that i enjoy the most we uh, the, the one where i have the most fun with for me this is the one in which i enter in flow i just get consumed by it it's super fun to do is where you put together everything the backgrounds the characters the sound everything together to create life it really feels like that now again as i mentioned don't go straight ahead to animating because you will do something like this but if you record yourself as a reference then you can get the perfect timing for your animation and the perfect organic movements you need for it now, important note for your animation is better to animate each scene separately. That is, if you have 10 panels in your storyboard, then you need to do 10 different Cartoon Animator 4 project files. And of course, some panels happen in the same scene, like the phone operator reacting to the stupidity of, of the hunter. It was, let me show you, for the operator, it was panels 20, 21, 22, and 23. These four panels are on the same scene. So in total, let me show you the my project files for this animation was this. It was in total 20 items, 20 files. Scene one, two, three, and then we have, for example, this is grouped together. Actually, it's only this one. 13, 18, 19, and this is also a group of panels in the same scene, and these two is also when the, <laughs> the hunter just looks uh, like confused and looks at his partner before doing the stupidest mistake ever. The point is, instead of using one single project file in Cartoon Animator for all my animation, I didn't. That is, don't do that. That is very stupid. This is super important. So use different files for different scenes. Got it? Next is the render, which is basically taking every single scene you animated and transform it into a video file that you can import to any editing software like DaVinci Resolve. And for me, it was 20 files. And then editing. This one is the fastest. <laughs> It takes just a couple of minutes to compile the whole animation. And after you have this, you can go back to make any little adjustments you feel you need to do uh, before you do the final animation. And then you're done. Congratulations. So 
the conclusion. Just to finish this video, I want to stretch out the importance of following these steps for doing smooth animation. The two most important ideas I want you to get from this lesson is that uh, are the it's two two lessons. Two points. One, start with a storyboard. Whatever you do, start with a storyboard. And number two, use video references. That is, when you have everything ready for your animation, don't start just yet. Record yourself to get the perfect timing for your animation. And then review that video frame by frame. And that's it. Do that and you will be able to create organic animation. Until next time, this is Mark Diaz for 2 Take care.